our lives. We're going back to the ancient Egypt, the land of creation, where like literally we were raised by. So all the way back in 2560 BC, do you believe that? Well, 2560 BC, these guys had such an amazing, uh, amazing culture and, and society for their own people. So they were able to use all this fancy ass math. And you know where they got that fancy ass math? Furry dogs. And you know where they really got that fancy ass math? Is when we go back in time and give it to them. So just because of this, a lot of us are familiar with him. He is a lovely, lovely wolf god. And he is so important to the ancient Egyptian culture because he helped with burial rites and he bestowed blessings with you know did all his fun stuff and he's also known for having the staff and everything and he was also king as and as a ruler because he's also some symbols of the pharaoh so he's also just like the pharaoh is part of the embodiment of Anubis which means that every pharaoh ever was had a wolf in his hotel. Ah, Sekhmet. Sekhmet is this really, really beautiful lion goddess. And she partly represents the fertility, but she's also just like a generic mother figure. And it's so nice and caring. And it's like, dude, if your nicest role model is a lioness, how are they not all furries? I mean, come on. Mascot, okay. Mascot is one of my personal favorites. And she's a, a smaller cat, not, not a big cat lioness. But she's also really cool, and she helps out with like the, the hearts in the home, and so it's one of those, like, the family life, and that's the mascot. So we just need to take all the cat furries, bring them back to near 3000 BC, and go, hi, I'm an embodiment of that set. Worship me. <laughs> Alright, so then, for all of you scalies out there, we have this super cool crocodile. So then is super awesome. But he's also somewhat representative of uh, war and being a hunter. So he's kind of more fierce. So if you wanted to be strong for going hunting or to defend the border, then you would take Sobek for help. So all us dragons and other scalies, you can go back and be like, oh yeah, I'm just a different version of Sobek. I'll teach you how to fight. Absolutely. Alright, Horus. Horus is an eagle, and the eye of Horus is a very commonly seen symbol throughout ancient Egypt. Oh. So, if we got any avians out there, uh, Horus the eagle was absolutely known for wisdom. So, you know when back a few slides ago when I mentioned that fancy ass map? All our, all our uh, avians are going to go back in our bird fur suits and say, Hello, I am the emissary of Horus. Here, have this fancy ass mask to build your pyramid. And Ra, so Ra is also a bird. Uh, he's more of a, a smaller falcon. Uh, so, also somewhat wisdom, but also um, possibly known for having good eyesight. So like they take that as a symbol and go, oh yeah, I can like see clearly, I can think clearly, I can help to make good decisions. So you want to go there and be like the Pharaoh's advisor and be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm totally raw. Yep, I can tell you exactly how to run your human. All right, Horsu. Is that the same picture from the previous slide? Go back. Go back. Yeah, <laughs> they are. What more? Yeah. One is the sun and the other one is the moon. Okay. <laughs> Alright, Horseshoe is a 
are in the <laughs> Alright, so under law are our um, gen uh, gender fluid icons. <laughs> so you can be one or the other or both, and it's just, you know, whatever you feel in that day, I'm kind of gender fluid, I'm, I'm God, I think we do as well. <laughs> there we go. So in summary, if we just go back to ancient Egypt, with our fur suits and really good cooling equipment inside of those fur suits, we could totally just be like, hi, I am the least emissary of your god. I'm not directly that god, but you know, they sent me here to give you some advice. And this would work with us. It would be so great. It would be so amazing. And we can just live like gods amongst a really, really awesome society.